هاي ومانا التحدي سلمتي ودمتي وكنت الأمان سلاما سلاما بلادي سموتي سلاما Hi and welcome to this third series of our Android development. Well, uh, if you obviously this uh, series of videos builds on the previous videos. So if you haven't watched the first episode uh, or the second episode, you will find the links below in the description. Okay, so what I would like to do today is to basically uh, link our project to Firebase. So how is that going to serve us? Well, I am right now in the main activity and I would like to replace this static data. So I don't want this, I don't need this. First, I would like to write all of this data into the Firebase uh, database and then download them when I need them, okay? And that is the plan. So first and foremost, to be able to use Firebase, I will have to have a Google account. So let's go to Google and let's write, for example, new Google account. Yeah. Let's click on the first link here and let's create a new account. And yahoo, that's it, I am in. I now have a new Google account. Okay, so let's go back to Android Studio. And let's link our project to this Google account that I have just created. So if you click on this icon here, and if you click sign in, and then you are redirected to Google, and you are simply asked, which Google account would you like to use? And I'm going to select this one, the most recently one that I've just created. I'm going to click allow to this. Okay, brilliant. So as you can see in here, I am now signed in and I can sign out if I want. Okay, and now let's add Firebase. Now there are two options to add Firebase. The first and the recommended approach is to go online uh, go to the Firebase console and add Firebase from there. The other approach or the other option, which is the easiest and the simplest, uh, basically to add it from Android Studio itself, from right here. And that's the approach that I'm going to use. As always, I love simple stuff. So let's go to Tools and let's click Firebase. And in here, let's select Real-Time Database. Let's click on save and retrieve data. Then, here's the steps that you'll need to follow. One to, uh, one to five. Okay, and so the first one says connect to Firebase and click on that. Right, and now we've got this window, which basically says, would you like to create a new Firebase project? And yes, I will say, yes, I want. And so, let me just give it a unique name. My favorite move is 2020. This is going to be my Firebase database project. And let's make sure that we are actually signed in to the Google account that we want, which is this one right here. Okay, and now let's click on connect to Firebase. And as you can see, now my Android Studio is trying to connect my app to Firebase. It first says start in project creation. And let's wait for it. And now it says determining Android clients to create. And now it says registering Android clients. And now it says downloading Firebase configuration. It seems that we are working. Yahoo! And now it says Firebase project created and connected locally to your app. Fantastic. And as you can see in here, it says connected. Now, my friends, this process could fail in, at your end. 
So you will have to redo it multiple times. If you if you face problems, please just Google. Please try to find out what the problem is by checking the errors and Googling the problem. Just copy the error and paste it in Google and hopefully Google will give you the answer, okay? Okay, and now on to the second step, which says add the real-time database to your app. And that's exactly what we're going to connect. And here we are. We have this one right here and let's accept the changes, okay? Right, fantastic. And now it says dependencies set up correctly. Right, now let me show you some things, my friends. Okay, let me show you some things. First of all, let's go to the, the build.gradle file, which is in the Mural app, this one right here. Let's double click on this. And now, as you can see, it has added this new line to us, which is the Firebase database. Now there is, as you can see, a warning here. And so let's fix this warning. What is the magical fixing key? Alt and enter, you got it. So Alt and enter, and as you can see, there is a new version of the Firebase of the Firebase database, which is 90.2.1. So let's accept this change. And now let's click on Sync Now. Let's wait for it until it fully updates and refreshes the Firebase state. Okay, done, fantastic. Now let's go to the build.gradle file, the project one. Not the module one, the project one. Okay, let's click on this. And again, as you can see, it has added this one to us, the Google services. And again, there is a warning in here. But basically, as you can see, there is a newer version, which is 4.3.3. And the current, uh, the, the one that we have is 4.2.0. So let's fix this again. It's Alt and Enter. And let's accept the first suggestion, which is changed to 4.3.3. And let's see if there is another problem now. And let's sync now. And again, let's wait for it until the sync process is fully completed. And yes, now the configuration is completed for us. And one more thing that I'd like you to do, basically Android Studio has added a new file to us. So if we change Android to project, okay, you don't have to do anything in here. This is just for your information. And if you go to the, uh, as, and as you can see in here, Google services.json, this is a newly added file for us. And if you double click on it, you will find all of the information that our project uses to connect to our online Firebase. Again, you don't have to do anything in here. This is just for your information. So let's go back to, to the Android view. And let's go to our main activity. Okay. And now let's go back to our step three, which basically says you will have to configure Firebase database rules. Okay, what is this? Well, basically, my friends, Firebase by default denies any request or any connections from the outside world. And now we want to open a, an access link between our project and Firebase. And we are not in the mood of setting up authentication because that's a lengthy process. And I don't want to do this now. I'm going to keep that for the future. So let's just configure the rules to make sure that everything is open for us. Okay, so let's change the rules from deny everything to allow everything. This is just for testing purposes. And obviously you should never ever do this for production scenarios. And so how do we do that? By clicking on configure your rules for public access. And this will redirect us back to Google. And the first thing that we have to do is to absolutely double check. Are we in the correct Google account? As you can see in here, I have multiple Google accounts. And yes, we are. We are in the, in the correct Google account. This one is exactly the same one as in our Android Studio, which is this one here, okay? And so the second thing that we'd like to do is to click go to cancel, right? And that will take us to Firebase Cancel. And which one is ours? I believe this one, which is my favorite movies 2020. So let's double click on that. Right. And now let's click on Develop. And then next, let's, let's click on Database. And then let's scroll down and find the real time database. And let's create a database. Let's click on this one here Create Database. And it gives us two options. It says, would you like to start on locked mode? Which basically no one in the world can read or write to this database, including ours, unless we are authenticated. Or let's start on this test mode, which basically anyone in the world, including us, can read and write to this database. 
So as you can see in here, there's a warning. Anybody, uh, any, anyone with your database reference will be able to read or write your database. So obviously you should not use the test mode during the production scenarios. So let's click enable. And that will take us straight to the data. Right, and as you can see, we have no data in here whatsoever. Uh, let me just show you quickly the rules, yeah? Because the, the, the Firebase rules are really important. Let's click on the rules tab. And as you can see in here, our rules are both set to true and true, which means anyone, including us, is able to read and write to this database. Okay. And just to double check this, we have a simulator. We can click simulator and let's try a read operation. Okay, let's select read in there and click run. And as you can see here, simulator read allowed, which means anyone can read our database, including us. Okay, now let's try a write operation, which is, for example, set or update. Let's set, let's try to set some data in there. Okay. And let's click run. Notice that we are not authenticated, okay? We are not authenticated because if we are authenticated, we can click on this. Okay, but we are not authenticated. We don't have any authentication, uh, any authentication scenarios. That means we don't have a username or password. So let's, let's now click run. And as you can see, the right operation is also allowed. See? That's, that is because our rules are both set to true and true, okay? You can, of course, change this, for example, back, uh, to false, which means no one in the world is allowed to uh, write to this. Let's try right now, okay? Let's let's try the simulator again. So let's publish the rules first, okay? Because we've changed them. So as you can see now, the write is set to false. And now, let's again try the write operation. For example, let's try to set a value, and we are not authenticated, as you can see in here. And let's now click Run. Hopefully, this will deny us, by the way. Let's click Run. Aha, uh -huh. and as you can see, the uh, right operation is denied. See, X in the right is denied because this is set to false. So let's set that this back to true because we are testing this, okay? And we are just learning. And let's, pub let's make sure to publish the rules, okay? Right, and the rules are now pu uh, published. And so let's go back to the data. Right, fantastic. So as you can see, we have no data yet. So let's go back to our Android Studio and let's go to uh, step number four, which is let's let's write something to the uh, Firebase database. Okay, so if we copy this code in here and let's put it somewhere on the onCreate method. Okay, so for example, let's put it right here. And as you can see, uh, we have some errors, so let's correct them. Let's import the, uh, let's correct them automatically using Alt and Enter. Alt and Enter. Alt and Enter again, until everything is fixed for us. Okay. And so, what we need to do right now is basically to run the object, to run the project. And hopefully, if things work okay, we will see in here a message says, Hello world! Okay, so let's see that. Let's run our project. Okay, and as you can see, our project is successfully run. See, it still works. If you'd like to know how we have built all of this, please watch the first and the second episodes. The links are in the description below. Okay, so now let's go back to the Google Firebase. And Yahoo! It says message, hello world. See, that's interesting, right? Okay. By the way, this is in real time. We have not clicked refresh on this page. It refreshes automatically immediately once we change the value in here so watch this what happens if i instead of change uh, hello world if i say hello hyphen and again let's me let me run my project watch this watch this and as you can see it automatically changes from hello world to hello hyphen fantastic and that is that thank you and happy coding روحي أنت قلبي